friends, it's me, Jenny, and I just wanted to post a little update video. The end of the year is just right around the corner, and I've been doing a lot of reflecting on life and creativity and things, and just, uh, yeah, have a lot of things to be grateful for, and a lot of uh, cool things that happened this last year. Stoked to say that, uh, yeah, it was a pretty damn good year for me, uh, despite there's like lots of things in the world that went wrong, but in my little life... My birthday was at the beginning of December, and Christmas is right around the corner. Every year at this time, you know, I always feel like reflecting and thinking about, you know, how things are going, like what I'd like to change, of course, like a New Year's resolution, uh, possibilities and things like that. <laughs> Goals and resolutions. <laughs> this year was especially cool because our channels are growing consistently, and I've been doing a regular schedule of uh, streaming on Twitch, which has been really fun. Never really expect to make a schedule because I really like just streaming whenever I wanted to, but honestly, I was usually streaming around midnight, so I figured I might as well make a little schedule and. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing late night streams regularly on Twitch for about six months now. <laughs> the schedule's worked out pretty well. Uh, I'm definitely not in a rush to make it big overnight or anything, but it feels really good to see the progress over time and seeing the same faces come back again and again in chat. <laughs> and, of course, YouTube is really fun. I love making videos for YouTube, but sometimes I just don't have enough time. Video editing is actually really fun, and I enjoy doing it quite a bit. But it does take a lot of time, and so I was going to do devlogs. Um, <laughs> last year I said my New Year's resolution was going to be to make one devlog per month, documenting all my progress doing game development, learning, learning game development skills using Unity and Blender primarily. And I've been doing a great job with learning, and I feel like I know a whole lot more. Definitely have documented quite a bit of the process, but it turns out that I can't edit a whole devlog once a month so I think in the future I'll probably do one every quarter or something like every other month <laughs> I don't know about you but sometimes I'll spend all day sometimes all week working on a video and to make one per month I feel like unless it's gonna be a live stream and just kind of improv and chatting in the moment I feel like if I'm gonna edit a video I should probably plan it even more so ahead of time and so I'm looking forward to this year instead of trying to be so consistent like once a month instead just focusing on quality and uh, maybe even like doing more like scripting and research for videos so um, I'm thinking it's time to kick it up a notch for the YouTube channel my main channel will still be primarily variety stuff so a little bit of everything but in case you didn't know um, I have a DIY with Jenny channel that has fashion like DIY fashion t-shirt cutting and stuff and I have my gaming channel Jenny Nexus plays games because I know a lot of my viewers, you know, maybe they're not really into gaming, but I have a lot of different interests, so that's why I have several different YouTubes, and I was trying to hone in on my niche by uh, making different channels for each of my interests, but I think that having my main channel and just doing different types of videos on the main channel is probably what I'll wind up doing, because it's, you know, the channel I put the most time into and have the most viewership on so far. I love hearing good suggestions and sometimes I'll wind up making a whole video on a particular suggestion. So I do appreciate when people give me any feedback, of course. The last month or two I spent quite a bit of time updating my website, which I hadn't done in quite a while. <laughs> so I learned some more Bootstrap and CSS and had a bunch of fun making the pages look more consistently pretty. <laughs> I learned how to do like a CSS gradient on the background and just tried to make it look a little bit more streamlined and professional. JennyNexus.com. Also, I added some features on there like a schedule for the streams that I do actually schedule ahead of time. And a voice acting page because whenever I'm lucky, I actually get to collaborate with others. And I have a voice acting playlist here on YouTube and su super stoked. I got to collaborate with, I don't know, like 20 different independent animators and or like game developers. <laughs> so voice acting has been really, really fun. I haven't done as much this year, but I would love to do more in 2020, so if you if you like my unique voice and think it would work out well for a character you have or a narration that you need for your YouTube video or something, just let me know. When it comes to 3D modeling, using Unity for game development, voice acting, 
all those things. I'm still building my portfolios, so I really do welcome opportunities to grow my skills and to get feedback on my performance. And I definitely invite future opportunities for more voice acting. Oh yeah, voice acting. <laughs> when I was younger, I was not necessarily a huge fan of my voice because I thought that it was pretty weird and like deep for a chick. <laughs> I've always had like a kind of a unique voice and I think everyone to a certain extent probably hears their voice differently or than it sounds. Or... Anyway, it just sounds weird hearing your own voice coming out of your head and Maybe some people don't have that as much as others. I don't know. I always thought that my voice sounded really weird and never really liked hearing my voice when it was recorded. But then after enough, like hearing myself talking like <laughs> on streams, listening to my past broadcasts or whatever, um, doing like video editing, it's honestly, it's like tolerable, you know? <laughs> it's like not too bad. <laughs> my voice isn't too bad. Not that there's such a thing as a good voice and a bad voice, but yeah, I just didn't really foresee getting into something like voice acting or ever really wanting to do singing. But lately I've found out just how much I really enjoy practicing different voices for different characters and expressing different emotions and playing a part of an original character or being a part of collaborations with others. It's so much fun. And uh, yeah, a few months ago, or I don't know when it came out. Uh, hey Google, when did Twitch Sings release? Cool, so <laughs> they announced it in 2018. I don't know if I think it came out also in 2018. <laughs> um, but yeah, Twitch Sings has been really, really fun. And I don't know about you, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I personally got over my vo vocal insecurities enough to at least have fun. Whether or not I think I'm like great or whatever with like my voice, um, voice acting or narration skills or Twitch things, um, regardless of actual skill, like just participating is so much fun. It's one of those activities, kind of like art, where if, even if you're not good at art, well, maybe not for everyone, but <laughs> for me and probably a lot of other people too, like even if you don't feel like you're good at art, you can still have a lot of fun doing it. Similarly with dancing or like now that I found out about twitch sings i had done some karaoke in the past but not too much definitely not enough to get comfortable or confident about it <laughs> just enough to like get over my nerves and like actually stand up there in front of people and belt one out <laughs> the most memorable karaoke experience i had was when i sang baby got back and the whole bar wound up singing along with me and like putting their arms up in the air and i could not even believe my eyes <laughs> That was like once many years ago and definitely never had that happen again since <laughs> probably only like two or three times that I went to karaoke since then. Uh, but yeah, since karaoke time and not really ever getting into that too much and then learning about Twitch Sings because you can do Twitch Sings in the privacy of your own home. You don't have to worry about embarrassing yourself out in public or getting beer spilt on you at the bar. <laughs> you can just like have fun and play at home and it's really easy to practice and rehearse and to redo songs. They actually have so many songs available on Twitch Sings that in the past there's always such a huge thing about like, oh don't, you know, can't touch copywritten music and stuff. Well it's just so cool that on Twitch Sings, they, since I guess they're covers, I'm not sure how they manage to do it if they have to buy the rights to the songs or because it's a cover or because they're covers they don't have to I'm not really sure all I know is there's something like 2,000 or more songs on twitch sings and in the past like I was under the impression you couldn't really use those like popular songs but now that you can sing along with like a lot so many of your favorite songs on twitch sings <laughs> it's just super fun and I really do appreciate that um, not only can you sing and play by yourself but you can also play with your friends and uh, the way it works is that you can either sing a song solo or you can sing as a duet, which means you either start or complete the song. And two players will get like pretty much like half of the lyrics each. And then the game will kind of like, you know how like karaoke has the lines right there? Well, it'll have the lines and the beats and then it'll show the colors for like whose turn it is. And then it like stitches it together so that you have like a two-person duet. By the way, Twitch Sings is also free, so if anyone wants to play Twitch Sings with me, I'll leave a bunch of open duets up, and that's where you pretty much you do the first half of a duet, and then anyone else is welcome to complete the duet. So that's a really fun activity. <laughs> and actually recently they started doing this other thing called party mode, and you can actually get in a room with up to, I believe it's five people, and I tried it once, but my friend was like all the way on the other side of the world, so I'm not sure. There was definitely some lag where I would hear the music and then his voice was like several seconds later. 
And I could like, if only the sync was better, then I would have been able to perform better. <laughs> I just wanted to do a good job and have fun with my friend. I definitely had fun, but it was just so hard to like get. It's just hard to um, listen to it so out of sync when I'm trying to, when I was trying to like sing along with it. Um, but yeah, so party mode is really fun, and I haven't tried it yet with someone, maybe like someone in my own state or city, like maybe um what's it called. Maybe someone in the same like server, ingest server, is that what they're called? <laughs> someone that's using a similar server like US, like, or, you know, not like across the world, maybe a little bit less like delay problems. <laughs> but it's really cool that they managed to sync it up as well as they do, considering that, I mean, I, I can't even imagine how hard it would be to like program something where people on opposite sides of the world are going to be even relatively in sync. <laughs> so the fact that it's even manageable at all, like to any degree, to me is just mind blowing and super fun and awesome. And I'll bet that if I played with someone in my own town, it wouldn't really have that kind of like audio sync lag. It was like in real time because in the party mode, all I know is it is fun and Twitch Sings is awesome and I recommend it. I would love to play Twitch Sings with anyone. So if you have a request, <laughs> if it's a song I also really like, I'll totally do it solo. <laughs> or if you want to do a duet and you have a favorite song, uh, let me know what it is. A lot of the other cool stuff that happened this year, I already kind of vlogged about it. But just off off the top of my mind, I'll let you know some of my other favorite things that happened this year. <laughs> For one thing, yeah, our top channel supporter, Graham Weldon. <laughs> Shout out to Graham Weldon, who's been our top channel supporter of 2019, big time. Sent me a Nintendo Switch, a converter so I can play Nintendo Switch with a PS4 controller. Uh, sent me a Stream Deck. Sent my boyfriend a keyboard so he can program faster and create more video games for Martian games. <laughs> Thank you, friend. We definitely have a ton more experience with live broadcasting now than ever before. And I don't mean to toot my own butt trumpet. <laughs> um, toot my own horn. But I feel really stoked about knowing more about OBS. And actually, like, I had just... Um, there's quite a few softwares that I have gone through and tried and like currently wound up with uh, OBS Studio, which I know a whole lot more about now than before. And I love OBS Studio. Oh yeah, I learned how to use Banana Meter this year. And if you don't know what Banana Meter is, trust me, you don't want to know. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's basically for people that want to overly complicate their audio settings or if you have a particular use for separating audio, um, like how I do when I'm streaming. For streaming and or Discord, having voice meter banana is super helpful because you can separate the audio tracks and adjust the volume accordingly for each audio track. It gave me so much trouble this year, but at the same time, now that I know how to use voice meter banana, it's just so awesome to be able to do that. And it just took me a really long time to really like get a handle on like what the hell was going on in voice meter banana. <laughs> Uh, but now that I know how to use it, and especially for different particular uses, I'm actually able to, like, use it with Discord and, like, say I'm, say I'm streaming a game with my friends and we are chatting on Discord, but I may want to be able to adjust the volume of my friend's chat coming in from Discord so that they're not, like, overpowering my voice, then you can do that with Voice Meter Banana. Usually you can only adjust the audio of like a headset or your main audio on the computer. But yeah, Voice Meter Banana is super cool and you can route audio. Like it is so complex and goes so far beyond like my own needs or knowledge. <laughs> but some people will use two streaming computers and Voice Meter Banana can totally be used for those types of complicated streams and be really helpful and pretty much just really powerful and amazing. Um, I think it's better than using regular audio, even though it was like really hard to get used to and to figure out like what was wrong half the time. Once I finally figured out like the main things, like how to work it out, like it's great. There's some other software that I learned this year as well, including DaVinci Resolve, which is free. And that's a free video editing software that's pretty cool. I had been using Sony Vegas Pro and it was like kind of annoying because of the interpolation of like the rendering. I figured out how to like adjust it so it wasn't always all that bad. Um, Sony Vegas Pro, uh, it was really awesome. It's what I learned on. Change, like you had to like stop a certain type of interpolation and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I got tired of Sony Vegas Pro, so I started using DaVinci Resolve and there's a lot of things that I like about it, especially the part about how it's free and it's pretty easy to like animate different parts of the video and to do overlays and stuff like that. 
I've been learning Unity 3D for at least five years now, and uh, honestly, like, I'm still not very good with programming skills. My partner, that's his specialty, so for me, I've been focusing on just, like, learning the interface of Unity, and I pretty much, like, totally know my way around Unity and how to do quite a few things in there. Unity 2019 came out recently, like, a few months ago, and the same day, actually, Blender 2.8 came out. Both had, like, big updates, and they work really well together. You can use the Blender file inside of Unity. Blender 3D, I actually just started getting used to this year, uh, like a few months ago when 2.8 came out. And I made it a priority to learn and focus on Blender 2.8 with Unity 2019. And that's a lot of what I've been streaming on my Twitch channel. The journey, learning how to use Blender <laughs> and using it with Unity. Since I had been learning 3D Max for a long time before, I had a pretty good basis for like how to use 3D software. It was just a matter of learning all the shortcuts and relearning how to do the same thing as just a different program. <laughs> And at first it was like just so frustrating because just like every little thing I wanted to learn how to do just took me so much longer than it would. Like once you know something, it's just like muscle memory, but like just just like doing the simplest tasks taking a long time. <laughs> I'm really glad. Obviously, I'm not going to give up on anything because I'm way too stubborn for that. Oh, yeah. Back in October, we made a Halloween mini game and streamed the whole thing on Twitch. That one I did not make the 3D models for. Most of the models I did not make in that. I made like one or two. Um, but I did put the game together and we programmed like the character behavior and the enemy behavior. That was so much fun. I love making mini games and so I had so much fun making that Halloween mini game that I immediately made another goal to complete a mini game for Christmas too. <laughs> So I've been working on that ever since and it's basically like the first full-blown like 3D environment that I created in Blender. So um, yeah, basically like since I've been focusing on learning Blender, my personal goal was to create a house, a 3D house, and we totally did that. We even made a 3D character in Blender as well, but it's totally not done. The house is looking better than the character. <laughs> in 2020, I'll be spending a lot of time in Blender and Unity and streaming quite a bit of it as well. After I finish the Christmas mini game, which is going to be like a little present for my friends and family for Christmas, I'm not sure what the next game project will be after that, but we did also start this one. I guess I'll, I'll just leave it a surprise for now, but there's at least one other prototype that's been started um, and it's pretty cute and fun looking. There's at least one other game prototype that we've started and I'll just leave it a secret for now. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> or if you stop by one of my Twitch streams and ask me about it, I'll gladly tell you. <laughs> but usually we have several game projects open at any given point. My partner does like professional multiplayer games and I'm basically just learning still. Learning as much as I can every day. <laughs> I'm just learning as much as I can every day. And I guess I'm not sure if it'll be one of my next projects, but sometime in this coming year, I definitely want to make a VR game experience so I'm not sure how much of a game it'll be or how experimental it'll be but I do want to make something for VR and I don't know if it'll happen this year but sometime in the future maybe the next two to three years I really want to make a game that's good enough to put onto Steam Blah. <laughs> I don't know if it'll happen it probably will not happen this year but within the next two or three years I would love to make a game that's good enough to put up on Steam it used to be that you would have to get your game greenlit on Steam but now you just gotta pay hundred bucks and like pretty much anyone can put a game up on Steam. But I would, for my own personal, you know, pride, I would like to make it at least decent and at least like five times better than the couple of mini games that I've made so far. <laughs> like multiple levels, like actual work, you know, that would take probably a couple of years. So obviously I'll keep you posted on any and all game projects that I come out with. I post all the time on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. I'm on there almost every day. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's unhealthy, but I definitely put a fair share of time into my social media, usually every day. And uh, those three socials are the ones I'm on the most. And I'm definitely on Discord quite a bit as well. And I love growing my community server on uh, Discord. I have channels for Blender, Unity, general game development, art and animation. And if you have a YouTube channel or a Twitch stream, there's a section for self-promotion. So you're definitely invited to come on into my Discord and check it out, share your work. Obviously, you know, don't post anything that's against terms of service, but there's like a whole list of rules in there. <laughs> Reasonable people are totally welcome and invited to join my Discord. <laughs> yeah, I really do enjoy Discord because you can separate topics by category and it's just cool. I really like the way you can like 
organize your communications with people and you can adjust the privacy settings for each channel so you can have like different people are able to view different channels based on different parameters. I am actually on the Discord Hype Squad. I forget if I ever told YouTube, but yeah, a while back, actually, maybe like five or ten videos ago, we had made a video application for the Discord Hype Squad and we got accepted. Woohoo! We got a Discord shirt in the mail and stickers and buttons and fun stuff because we go to events sometimes and they like to do these little promo packages where the Discord Hype Squad can like hand out merchandise at events and stuff. So I got all this really fun merch and, um, but yeah, Discord, I honestly, seriously though, um, I actually like it better than, almost better than Facebook. Actually, all my friends are on Facebook, so I would, I miss out on a lot of like family and friend stories, but I kind of prefer the way the communication works better on Discord. And um, they also have an entire section for games and you can load your indie game up onto Discord as well. So I'll probably, honestly, I'll probably try to put something up on Discord before Steam. I'm just so happy with all the friends that we've made through streaming and yeah, out of all the social medias, like those are my favorites. I post pretty much every day on Twitter and Instagram as well. I do Instagram stories, which I love doing throughout the day. Facebook, I have a couple of Facebook pages and I do update there sometimes. I try to do like slightly different posts on my different social media so it's not like the same thing everywhere. Sometimes I'll post some duplicates, but usually I'll try to make my posts a little bit different for each one. Like if I'm posting a photo, I'll try to post a different photo from the same set on different socials. So if you follow me on multiple socials, that's what you can expect, a little bit of variety. Oh yeah, some of my favorite events this year happened in Seattle. We got to go to PAX West and the Seattle Indies Expo, which happened at the same time as PAX. And we went to several Seattle Online Broadcasters Association meetups. <laughs> this year I had some car problems, so I didn't wind up like driving my... Um, this year I did have some dumbass car problems, so I didn't always have a reliable car to like get to go do fun things. Uh, right now at the moment we have a rental because it's so cold outside and like through the winter it's just kind of like not practical to walk to the store because it's just really really cold, wet, and I don't want to get sick out there in the rain. <laughs> we were taking lifts to like the grocery store but it wound up being pretty much like more expensive than it would be to get a super cheap rental car. And the rental car is about the same price as a new car would be like a car loan payment so um... <laughs> I can't wait to get a brand new car one day again, but honestly I can wait because I want to hold out until I can get a good one, like a new Tesla of course. <laughs> of course I want a Tesla. <laughs> so I'll just wait for a new car. This last year when my car broke down, I was like, oh whatever, you know, I'll just work extra. And I did, I worked a bunch extra, I saved up some cash and like did several different big repairs on the car. I spent like, I don't know, 1800 bucks or something total. And the car still has all kinds of problems, um, won't even work at all now, my, my car. And that's the same car that I bought brand new all the way back in 2002. And I've had that car ever since and it's been totally reliable until this last year. I thought I could save it, but it's got 220,000 miles on it. So I feel like it had a pretty good run. I was really rooting for like 300,000, but beggars can't be choosers. And the fact that we have a little rental car, it's like I really don't care about my car anymore. It's like as long as I got some wheels and I don't have to like freeze my ass off just to go to the store and get super heavy like gallons of water like stay alive. <laughs> Cost of living is really expensive but luckily we're able to pull it off enough to you know sustain a relatively healthy and happy lifestyle. Not exactly buying a house or a car anytime soon but you know we got our health and I got kitty. Oh that was another thing. I had actually posted a video a while ago too about Alice the cat and some of my friends here you guys on YouTube have been following me for years and years and I've had Alice for 14 years now. She's 14 and a half. And this year we found out that she had this thing called hyperthyroidism and so we um, had to get her treated for that. And there's different treatments for it and I did all kinds of research and I know like a lot more about her condition now but um, the treatment that I wanted to do and that we wound up getting for her is this thing called radioactive iodine therapy and basically you drop her off at a special vet that has like a certification to handle radioactive substances and she had to stay there overnight until she wasn't radioactive anymore. <laughs> And then um, some cats, they got to stay there a lot longer. She only wound up staying for three nights, but some cats will have to stay for a whole week. And if you live in the UK, I found out that those people have to keep their cats quarantined for three weeks. They have to stay at the doctor. So I'm just so grateful that we live in the US and happen to live here in Washington where there's a wonderful treatment center and I'm just like so glad. Here she comes right now. She knows I'm talking about her. Come here, girl. <laughs> Come here, baby. She's doing so much better. Um, the the tr 
some of the symptoms that I had noticed where she had started losing some weight and um, her fur like right here was kind of like thinning out <laughs> on like her hind like right above her butt right here um, and that's some of, those are some of the symptoms of hyperthyroidism in cats if their fur starts to look like kind of scraggly like greasy it's because the body produces this I think it's a hormone I don't know it's um I forget what it's called but the body will produce something that causes the hair to look greasy. Yeah, basically, if you have an older cat, you're supposed to take your older cat um, to the vet like twice a year because they're far more likely to come down with Ill illnesses. And some of them you can treat, like the hyperthyroidism, if it's caught soon enough. Because if it's not caught soon enough, then they'll get um, other organ failure, liver and ki or kidney failure, or I don't know, li liver as well. Um, Usually uh, kidney or heart problems is what will happen if you don't treat your cat for hyperthyroidism. So one of the treatments is a lifetime of pills and it does not cure it. It does not cure the problem. It just, it basically, you have to pill them like twice, once or twice a day for the rest of their life until eventually their kidneys will give up because the pills will cause organ damage over time. So we didn't want to do that. Um, if the cat already has liver or heart problem, or sorry, if the cat already has kidney or heart problems, then they're not even able to qualify for the radioactive iodine treatment. So I'm really glad that Alice was still in pretty damn good condition otherwise. And so I was just really glad that Alice didn't show signs of congestive heart failure or kidney disease yet, and that she was able to do the treatment. Of course, I've always lived kind of like paycheck to paycheck. I didn't have a bunch of money just sitting around like savings. <laughs> Different points in my life, I've had savings, other points not so much. Right now it's been kind of like month to month. So I had to like do a fundraiser for a kitty's treatment. It was like on the website, it said it could be up to $1,700 at the treatment center that we took her to. So of course I freaked out, did not have that type of money or anything like that. So we wound up doing a fundraiser and thank goodness, it was really hard not to panic about Alice when I got her diagnosis because I knew I couldn't really afford the treatment, but I decided that nothing was going to stop me from getting her this treatment because it will actually cure the hyperthyroidism, has almost almost 100% success rate with actually curing the hyperthyroidism. If the cat has a super high T4 level, then there's more like an 85% chance of getting cured. Alice was a pretty high T4 level. She's due for a checkup pretty soon, and I'll be sure to let you guys know her status at that point. It's been about a month since her treatment, and her fur is looking way better, like nice and thick, and like growing back all beautifully. And she put on some more weight, and generally just uh, way more relaxed, like a normal cat, instead of like being like hyperactive. I just thought, um, at first I thought she was just getting older, you know, like getting, losing a little bit of weight. I thought that would just be natural. When you get older, usually people and animals get smaller, you know, so, um, but at a certain point I was like, no, there's definitely something wrong. And that's when we took her to the doctor and found out. But thankfully she's, I mean, she is a, an older cat. She's 14, but a lot of cats live to be 18, 19, 20 or older. Really looking to have the longest, healthiest life for my kitty as long as she's happy and healthy. Just so very grateful to my friends who donated to the, it wasn't a Kickstarter, it was a um, to GoFundMe. <laughs> Thank you so much to my friends who donated to my GoFundMe and the Facebook fundraiser that we did. There was at least like $400 that people donated, but you know, the treatment was so expensive that I still had to like uh, go figure it out. And uh, thankfully my credit was just good enough to get just enough credit. I completely maxed out my potential credit and I need to pay off some credit cards now. <laughs> um, but I don't mind because like I got my kitty and I mean every day is just like it's a hustle you know every day in life is a hustle. So we'll pay off those credit cards no problem. Just so glad to have the kitty and so grateful that my friends were there when I really needed help. I didn't honestly I didn't think that I would be able to get approved for any more credit cards but luckily a credit union that I've been with for quite a few years was willing to up my credit line and there is care credit in case in case anyone doesn't know about care credit first time I had heard about it it's for both animals and people and you can use it for dental vision including vets for your animals so I got $950 worth of care credit and then the rest on you know the credit card and donations so that was a pretty stressful month you know we had to like raise the funds and get her the treatment my car had been broken so we had to rent a car to get her to the doctor because it's an hour away and you can't just cancel your appointment so I had to make sure that we were responsible to get her there you know make sure I, I didn't want to rely on anyone but myself to make sure the cat got to her expensive appointment <laughs> and more importantly got the treatment because it took like three weeks from when we set up the appointment to when she was actually able to get in 
And of course, there's always other cats that are waiting to be seen, so you don't want to cancel. This year I got to do some pretty cool brand deals with different companies from Amazon and a couple others. This product in particular is pretty awesome and I got it from Amazon. It's by Youth and it's called Hyaluronic Acid Plus. <laughs> Can't exactly pronounce it, but it's for anti-aging and I did Google the ingredients and it looked good to me. I don't use too many products on my face or skin because I just like a real minimal kind of like intake of things, especially if I don't know what they are, um, but it's got vitamin C, uh, tripeptide 31, <laughs> and um, I, I'll try to say it, hyaluronic acid, myristeol tripeptide 31, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, um, butylene glycol, and phenoxanthal. I googled the first few of those. It looked fine to me. Depending on what it is, I'll totally try it. And the fact that, you know, it was advertised for anti-aging, I couldn't help but give it a whirl because, well, my birthday was the other day, so of course I'm thinking about living forever. <laughs> it's just been a really nice kind of addition to my facial cleansing routine at the end of the night. Makes my skin and my face feel really nice the next day. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like it so far. I like it a lot and they have some other products as well that I would like to try like a moisturizer and some other things Shout out to the sellers from Amazon. They let me try this amazing product. I Love doing Amazon reviews and in general doing product reviews, especially tech reviews friends <laughs> This was really cool super bonus uh, right there um, but I also got this really cool tripod this last year and It's huge man. It's big and sturdy and it's like Really awesome ass tripod. I think I already talked about that in a previous vlog, but um, it's still one of my favorite things for streaming and um, photography. <laughs> but yeah, the tripod is really awesome. And um, oh, I got some new lights. Actually, I got these. Um, I got the strip lights that are hanging up in the back, and they're so pretty. I can't decide where I want to put them. But I got like actually three different types of lighting nowadays. Actually, more than that, but three that have controllers, and these ones are all like the LED color changing type of lights. So it's been really fun uh, trying out different color schemes. Schemes. <laughs> yeah, every color makes a really pretty different type of background. I've been having a lot of fun doing different little photo shoots and stuff with this, and it's perfect for when I'm doing like um, pictures for Instagram or Facebook or. But yeah, there's so many different settings, and you can actually save your own custom colors too with the uh, strip lights. Um, this one's in the umbrella light b behind me, and that one's cool. Uh, and then this one are like the two floodlights, one on either side. I'm gonna get a bit of better lighting for the background so that I can do green screen stuff. Now, right now, I've got so many different light sources that it it's really interesting and fun to like play with, but it's not necessarily the best like consistent lighting for a green screen. But I'll definitely use my green screen more <laughs> in the future once I get the lights set up perfectly for that. <laughs> As for goals, as for my goals in 2020, I'm really looking forward to making more games, getting way better at Blender and Unity, C Sharp programming, and maybe even like get into some Python scripting. I've been looking into ways to customize my chat and some other things, and you can write Python scripts to customize things in uh, OBS and Streamlabs um, alerts. <laughs> Maybe not everyone knows about those things, but for all my streamer friends, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'd like to tend to my DIY with Jenny channel a bit more in the coming year and get a bit more consistent with that and maybe get a better formula for producing content that's DIY fashion related, but maybe not always cl cutting shirts. But I'm most, most excited about learning 3D art and implementing those skills in whatever else I do. So whether that means making cool 3D intros for my DIY fashion videos or my gaming videos or this year I'm really <laughs> this next year is gonna be awesome I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing get better with all the different things I'm trying to learn how to do continue to build my website and my stream and my channels and take you along with me on the journey maybe get to do some more traveling in the summer too we'll see <laughs> I had so much fun going to Southern California last summer. I really hope that I can do a bit more traveling next summer as well, but this winter I'll basically be chilling out and staying indoors a lot, probably streaming and making videos. So this winter I'll be focusing on that and I'll be around. So if you guys, uh, if anyone has a suggestion, like I was saying, if anyone has a suggestion, please let me know if you prefer gaming or I don't know. I guess I should do more polls. <laughs> it's so funny when I do polls because I don't always get what I want to hear. 
So I, I would like to get, um, I would like to at least consider, you know, what, what the viewers want, you know, and meet somewhere in the middle because I want to produce content that's like valuable or like worthwhile for others to watch. But obviously I also want to do what's fun for me too. So uh, I do appreciate the input and whenever people like let me know what they like or what they are not into, uh, I do appreciate it. So, well, I guess that's it for now, friends. Thank you so much for well, watching the video and for anyone who's been a part of my life on any platform, thanks. <laughs> I really appreciate it and it's so much fun to create content and be creative. If you have any questions about Blender or Unity, I would love to hear them. I may not always know the answer, but especially in the Discord, sometimes there's people in there that know even more than I do, so um, whether it's on Discord or in the comments here on the YouTube video. And once again, I can't say thank you enough to the people who donated towards helping me get Alice the hyperthyroidism treatment. That just means the world to me, so thank you so much for that. Thanks again, friends, for the viewership and support both here on YouTube and on Twitch. Have a wonderful rest of your 2019 and best of success to you in the new year. Bye, friends!